Relationship is at the heart of who God is, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. The Bible tells a story of a people made in God's image and made to live in relationship with God, in relationship with neighbour and in relationship with self. The ideal of this relationship is reflected in the creation narratives at the beginning. But it is not long after that we see their first fracturing. See Genesis chapters 1 to 3. But God is in the business of making all things new. The Bible's closing pages present a picture of creation redeemed and God's kingdom fully revealed. See Revelation chapter 21. God's people are restored to perfect relationship with each other and with their God. This is made possible through Christ's death and resurrection and as God goes on bringing into being that which does not exist. Christ's followers are called to reflect the breaking through of God's kingdom in every relationship. This is rarely easy and always risky. That was true of the Samaritan with a stranger and is just as true in our relationships of deep intimacy or encounters with colleagues or friends. Our pride and deep fear of humiliation and failure can drive us to relate in ways which are neither life-giving for ourselves nor others. The Samaritan might have acted from a selfish motive, such as a need to be needed or to be seen as a hero, or perhaps he was driven by a desire to be special or to always succeed. Yet this story is told by Jesus to illustrate what it means to be a good neighbour, and therefore the Samaritan is clearly someone who truly desired the well-being of another. This was costly, not only financially, but also in terms of time, emotion and risk, a point which would not have been lost on Jesus' Jewish audience who looked down on Samaritans and had virtually no social contact with them. Here is someone of difference, choosing to act in the interest of the other. This is about what Paul calls in Philippians, having the mind of Christ.